Agathea Builder of Worlds. <sighs> Sorry there's no build video this week. I'm um, up to my absolute eyes in making red wool for Burrows and Badgers. Um, and it's taken me a lot longer than I thought it was going to. And uh, there have been delays uh, from a family point of view. You know, reasons. Pfft, hey, it's the real world. Um, so what I thought I'd do this week instead of... Uh, um, not having much of a build. I've made some progress, but not as much as I'd want to put in the video. I thought I'd share with you uh, a bunch of other scenery that I've made for Burrows and Badgers in the past. So this tonight then is going to be a scenery showcase. Um, a riverside and swamp showcase, if you like. The village of Bimfliot. Now, it's worth pointing out again, um, you know, some of you by now watching this have already gone out and bought Burrows and Badgers and have bought the figures and are on the Facebook group and are blaming me for that and I'm delighted. Sorry, not sorry. Those of you who have never come across Burrows and Badgers before, um, it's a tabletop skirmish game, an anthropomorphic game, so all the characters are British mostly, um, wildlife uh, that have been anthropomorphised so they kind of like have human characteristics uh, set in a fantasy pseudo medieval kind of uh, Britain around about the kind of early medieval dark ages kind of time it's a, a terrific game I can't say enough good things about it um, it's a quick system to pick up it's difficult to master um, it's got a, a fun narrative kind of campaign uh, there are loads and loads of really good reasons for buying this game the buy-in is not very expensive. You can buy a set of rules from Oathsworn Miniatures, who are the manufacturers of the game, or from Osbay. But get them from Oathsworn to get an exclusive figure. Um, and then two warbands, well, those three things, two warbands and, and a set of rules, you could spend £70, £80. You spend £100, you've got everything that you need to play. Of course, you will by the rest of the figures. The figures are made by Michael Lovejoy and they are absolutely fantastic. I have to confess I have the entire range. In fact, in my 35 plus years of tabletop wargaming, Burrows and Badgers is the only figure range where I can say that I own every figure and every figure is painted. Check out some of these figures. They're just absolutely brilliant. I'm not saying my paint jobs are absolutely brilliant. There are much better painters out there than me. I'm very happy with these paint jobs. They look great on the tabletop. But the figures pretty much paint themselves. There are the massive characters. Badgers, red kites, bulldogs. They're very, very dangerous. But few and far between because they cost a lot to have in your warband. Then there are the large guys. Otters, foxes, wildcats, big raptors. They're dangerous, dangerous beasties too. Uh, the large uh, characters include hares, who are probably the best all-rounders in the game. Then there are the medium-sized creatures, and that's rabbits and cats and rats and hedgehogs and moles, um, and then uh, various kind of exotic creatures from afar. And then the teeny tiny fellas too. Mice and shrews and tiny small birds. So as you can see, the, low, the Oathsworn figure range is fantastic. It's really great. Um, they are all one cast piece figures, either in uh, pewter or uh, resin. The resin is fantastic. In fact, all the models are brilliant. You could take them straight out of uh, the box that gets delivered to you and with only a minimal amount of treatment, you can get them based up and ready to go and paint it, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, I've also really enjoyed this game because I've been able to convert a whole bunch of these figures too. Check some of these out. These are uh, converted figures, or in some cases they are figures that I have designed myself uh, and print, 3D printed. Um, I'd like to say design myself, you know, I did it on one of those miniature making um, websites, Hero Forge. Um, but they uh, come out right, they're not as nice as those small figures, but they kind of like, fill some gaps. And uh, Michael Lovejoy himself says that he just hasn't got enough time to fill gaps, and especially in some cases um, for civilian type characters. Because I don't sell brilliantly, and I totally understand that. But my kind of gaming, I want civilian characters in my games. 
And then I have also, as you can see here, really enjoy finding other figures from other figure ranges that you can use in burrows and badges as well. B&B is not an exclusive game to Oathsworn in that you must use Oathsworn figures. Um, obviously, I'm a big fan of Oathsworn figures and I suggest you go to oathswornminiatures.com and go and buy your toys there. But if you've bought the entire range, like I have, then you're going to want to find other figures in other places. And there are figures here from Dark Sword Miniatures, Lucid Eye, there's some stuff from uh, Hordes, uh, and obviously some old classic Games Workshop figures too. So it's a lot of fun digging out and finding other figures in other ranges that you can add to this game too. One of the best things about Burrows and Badges is the fact that any figure can go with any figure. There's no specific armies and, and factions like you get um, in most other games uh, where you buy one set of figures and they only work together or with a limited number of allies. In this game, it's much better than that they all can work together uh, and and kind of like go into one warband or another. Right, let's take a look then at my riverside scenery. Here we go. This is stuff that I've made in the last two years. Um, I've got a thing about Wind of the Willows. I always have done since I was a kid. I always loved that kind of um, aesthetic. And when the um, animated series of Wind in the Willows came out, must have been in the, I can't remember, the 80s or 90s, uh, with David Jason being towed and Michael Horden as uh, Badger. I fell in love with it again because the models were absolutely charming. And some of this scenery kind of reflects that. This uh, is known as the Red House. I can't saw it as Rat's House, but they're, they're not water rats. They're just rats, so it's not Rat's House because it's a bit posher than that. This is made with balsa wood uh, on a polystyrene base, uh, teddy bear fur for the roof and uh, an XPS foam chimney in this case here. And I love some of the details that go into with this model. It's really difficult when you're making these kind of models because the problem is, is that there's a thin line between wargaming terrain and dolls houses, <laughs> really. Um, but every time I make a model I love to have a narrative and this kind of level of detail really helps to build that narrative. All of my B&B models are made to come apart. The whole point is that if you're making a model this big, you need to be able to get inside it. And a game like Burrows and Badgers really lends itself to narrative ideas for scenarios. Uh, I don't like scenery to be something you just walk around the outside of and want to interact with it. And that means that you feel the need to put details inside. There's enough detail inside this model to give the, the building character. We can see what's going on in each room, but not too much, so you can't actually place figures inside. And that's an absolutely crucial thing to bear in mind when you're kind of kitting out the inside of a building. This building has got features from a number of different companies and sources. Some of it is stuff I've definitely bought. There's stuff from Mantic Terrain Crate in there. Uh, the fish on the spit over the fire are from Zealot Miniatures. They do some really nice resin features. There are other things in there that are the result of digging through the cack. Oh yes, even in fantasy stuff like this, there's stuff that I've had lying around for a long, long time. In this case, uh, the uh, uh, little steering wheel on the chimney wall and that kind of thing. Just bits out of my bits box. Bits, even in fantasy uh, scenarios, still a, a very, very important when I'm, I'm making my models. This is Watney's Red Barrel. It's kind of gag for the oldens. Uh, this is the pub in Benfield, and that's Watney on the back platform. He's a mole, he's the one with the telescope. Him and his sister run this ale house. Oh, it's a tavern, really, because they serve food and various other things. And this is where all the dodgy deals are done in Benfield. All the shady characters come and meet smugglers and pirates and all sorts of other kinds. I've got a thing about making pubs, alehouses, taverns and inns. There is going to be a Magathia Builder of Taverns video coming soon. I love this model. It's really cool. It's got loads and loads of character. Again, there are loads of details inside and out on this model that help to kind of give a lived-in feel. So the wood pile on the back a platform all cut up and ready to go on the fire. Empty barrels make great cover, but they also help sell the, the tavern nature of the place. 
I also love this model because it's one of those ones where I've included uh, a whole bunch of different posters on the outside and inside of the walls. Posters really help sell uh, the world that you're, you're building in. Some of the posters I've made myself, uh, designed on the computer and others, are available off the Burrows and Badgers Facebook group. There are little details I like on this model. Leaning up against the chimney in the back room, just inside the door, is a club. Just where, where Watney or his sister can get grab a club if it all kicks off in the bar and they can lay about uh, the uh, punters who are getting a bit uppity. This is one of the first models I made uh, for out in the swamp. It's a bit plain. I tend to see it now as a fisherman's uh, house or cottage. Uh, this one features actually a beaver lumberjack, which is a conversion. Um, plain, simple. The roof, picture of the roof on this house is probably more right than all the other buildings because thatch roofs need to be quite pointy for water to run off. But hey, it's a fantasy model, so you know I really don't care. Um, Bolts of wood construction on this with teddy bear fur on the roof. I'm going to have to go back to this and put a lip over the top because I'm not happy with that gap that runs down the middle. But otherwise, this is a cool little model. Um, it comes off that base, so the base can be used just as a wooden platform on a, a marshy island and link up walkways as well. All the fish uh, features here are from Iron Gate scenery. Uh, they're printed resin little things. They're quite cool as well. They certainly add a nice little touch. And the nets, fishing nets and bits and pieces lying around, I made myself. So I started making uh, the bee, these swamp buildings because they're all going to be wood. They are only made out of balsa wood. I've kind of changed the way I make some buildings. Um, in the past, I, if I was making a, a building that was going to be wood, I'd still tend to make it in foam board and then clad it on the outside in balsa. But these models are made just from balsa sheet that has planking drawn and nails, uh, nail marks put into the planking as well. Um, so, which speeds up the building process and it means you don't lose as much size on the inside of the building as well. This bit of scenery is uh, the forge out in the swamp. It's not as grand as some of the other blacksmiths I've made for B&B &B, but it does the job. There's a little forge underneath that veranda there out the front of the house. Another little thatched cottage. I particularly like on this case the uh, large wooden stumps out the back that support the back of this place with water running underneath it. I just love all this kind of like water around from that point of view. It, it certainly has a real challenge. Although you can set the parameters of the game so if you want everybody can just wade through the water and the swimmers move much quicker. Or you could just stick to the walkways that are provided on the tabletop. The little boat in with this forge here, uh, nested up against the island, is from a, a really old kit a game called Weapons and Warriors, which used to be one of those games that you shot marbles at each other across the room at. Had uh, pirate ships and little rowing boats, jolly boats. And that is one of the little jolly boats that I carved the bottom out of, put a wooden base into, and now is one of the sailing boats in the marsh. It's pretty effective. This is the brewery where Watney uh, brews his own beer, Watney's Red Barrel. Um, the, it's a, a very simple model again, three sides of balsa wood um, and a, another teddy bear thatch roof, XPS foam chimney. The features inside this model, all the brewery equipment, comes from a fantastic resin set from Bad Squiddo Games. A little bit more pricey than some bits of resin kit you can buy, but a really nice set. It's very uh, versatile. I haven't stuck it down to this. The brewery building itself comes off the base again, so I could just use the base otherwise. And I can use the brewery bits in other places. But a, a nice little set, uh, and it provides, again, a, another interesting kind of location in the village. It's set up pretty close to uh, the Red Barrel Tavern because you know you don't want to spend a great deal of effort moving your beer from where it's made to where it's drunk do you? 
this little island with a, an ancient temple on it. I've had that temple for donkey's years. I mean, so long I can't remember. Um, it's and the island itself is based on kind of like the kind of Irish Cranog kind of idea with piles driven around the outside and then backfilled to reclaim some land. It's a quite a versatile little model because the the temple comes off and I can use the uh, Cranog bit for uh, other games and scenery and that kind of thing. Uh, this is one of the ships that I've made uh, for B&B. I say made, it's a blood and plunder vessel that I've converted. Um, there is a set of rules for ships uh, called Barks and Beavers. Uh, if you're interested in those, go find them there on the Facebook group, the B&B Facebook group. It's a, uh, in the file section. It's a set of uh, unofficial rules that I've written because I'm into ship rules. So go and give that a try out. There are other ships that I've made uh, or converted as well. So you might see those around about in other things later on. This ship is for my crew of pirates, led by Checkerboard Jack down there, the fella in the yellow black, the otter in the yellow and black bandana. Nice little crew, um, and it's a nice little model. It's good fun, you should try that out. This is a, a woven trap, a fish trap. This nice little bit of watery scatter terrain with woven hurdles that funnel fish down into an area that a fisherman could catch his fish without too much effort or work. So here's one potential layout for the village of Benfleot, the village in the marsh. I have a lot of fun laying these kind of things out. This was really restricted because it was on the dining room table at my mother's house, so it's very uh, thin. Normally this would be on a four foot by four foot uh, kind of area. That's certainly the water that I've got. The water I'm using here is a TT Combat rollout map. Now I'm not a huge uh, user of battle mats, but on this case this, it's absolutely brilliant. The colours are lovely uh, and it's a really great surface uh, to play on. And the uh, paint work on all the watery features that I've made goes really well on it. The wooden walkways and jetties are mostly made by me. Um, they're all balsa wood. Uh, some of them though are ancient and were made by my very good friend Matt Smith. And uh, as are the riverbanks. Uh, he made those God, 20 odd years ago and somehow I still managed to have them. Which is pretty cool. Thanks Matt. Um, I really like this as a battlefield. Um, as a place to play. Quite challenging though because of the nature of the the walkways. Um, characters that can swim or characters that can fly do have a certain amount of advantage when playing in this but uh, it, it does lead to some very amusing scenarios. I can't wait to get back to actually play games with real human beings. Uh, it'll be really cool. This battlefield is definitely going to feature in my upcoming B&B &B campaigns. So there you go. Um, that's my uh, waterside, riverside, swamp kind of town um, B and B scenery collection. It's quite large, and I'm added to it all the time. There are things I want to add to it. I'm desperate to make more things for it, but um, I've got a great big long list now. So it's going to be some time before anything else to it. But it is pretty cool. I cannot wait for this COVID thing to be over, so I can get some people around and get playing on that table along with all the other B&B &B tables that I've made in the last two or three years as well. Uh, there will be more scenery showcases coming up. Magathy, a builder of taverns is going to be one. Uh, Persistence, the Wild West Town is going to be another. If you want to see those make sure you click subscribe otherwise you're going to miss them. Go back and check out my showcases uh, playlist. That will be a good thing to do. You can have a look at uh, some of my other scenery I've built some time before I started this YouTube channel. I'm hoping that next time we're going to get around to the third video in the Red Wall build. Um, so yeah, again, make sure you kind of like 
stick with me there and hit that subscription button so you don't miss that out either. Turn on your notifications too. Please do leave comments down below about the models that I've made or, or ask me questions about how they've been produced, that kind of thing, because um, I love chatting with members of my community. And I to keep people going, because several people have asked me, I am now um, investigating a Discord server as well. That's a few weeks down the line, but I reckon that was probably going to happen too. So, thanks for watching MAGA 3 Builder of Worlds. I'll see you next time. Right, get back to this flipping mauve wall. Mm.